friends. Welcome to Floss Tube and Variety Show number 84. Yes, I think that's right. I'm Emily Williams in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and this is June 23rd, 2023. Thanks for joining me today. Um, thanks for any new subscribers that are look, are checking out another video. Appreciate it. And all of my returning friends, it's uh, great to make another video and to see you again. It's kind of funny how YouTubers talk about seeing their people because I never see you. But you see me, so that's good. So floss tube means cross stitch primarily. And variety show means something else. And I will give you a forewarning that today variety show is going to be my birthday celebration accounts and uh, some blasts from the past cross stitch. As I um, mentioned last time, I was, I am able to give you the blast from the past that I hope to at the, when I mentioned this at my last video, pardon me, let me have a, a drink. I just ate lunch, so. Um, we have had, it's another gray day today. I think it was a gray day last week. I can't remember. But uh, we've had a lot of rain and cloudiness and wind. Um, we've had four inches of rain in the past 36 hours or so. So a lot of rain. In fact, there's a flood um, watch, I guess, in this area, or there was until 11 o'clock this morning. We don't, we are low in our neighborhood. We're one of the lower properties and we have green space right behind us. You can see out the window. And in that green space is a creek, which is called the dry creek because I guess, because it's pretty dry normally, but I haven't been out today, but I'm gonna bet that it's not dry right now, that there's a lot of water in it based on the amount of rain we've had. So I don't know how that, affects the light in this room. But anyway, let's get to it. Cross stitch. Uh, Emily Kalwar, 1890, Hands Across the Sea. I am, I've now done all the way across two of those bands. So I have these two bigger bands and her name left. Huh, I'm not really well set up. We'll see what happens. So here we are. I am close to uh, being out of my second skein of that darker teal color, which I'll have to go and get another skein of it, I guess. And I'll, I'll, let me just say a few words about the chart. So the chart is, as Hands Across the Sea charts are, an exact charting of what the original sampler was to the extent that it's possible in modern stitching at all, which we can pretty much reproduce exactly what an 1890s stitcher reproduced. Excuse me, but if you were to study, especially this band right here and the one I just finished, you would see that Emily left out some things and I filled them in somewhat. Now, I, can, I thought about it. In other words, I didn't just do it um, without noticing that I was doing. I didn't just carry on with symmetry without really paying attention. I did think about it, and I decided that if she had noticed, she would have filled it in herself. So that's what, I'm, that's what I did. So this is a continuing to be very fun. Those last two motifs are bigger, or more... Um, what would you call them, bands, I guess. They're bigger. And then I have her name, which is not insignificant. And to finish the outer border of the piece, a lot of that dark teal color thread. So I'll show you the bands closer. Um, I had sort of thought I would have had this finished by before last Friday, my birthday, and be able to um, start Hannah Campbell 
but no. On the third weekend of most months, I work on Nativity Scene by Stitchy Princess, which is an Etsy. She has an Etsy shop. She's a Ukrainian designer. And I did work on this. I did the palm tree and most of Mary. She's not finished. I don't think. Oh, she doesn't have feet. I guess that's all she's missing. And... I put the feet on the little lamb down there. And I put the eyes uh, in the camel. No, no, I didn't. I didn't finish the last king or the camel. I almost did, I thought about it, but it was already Monday, which technically is not the weekend. And I had a lot of other things that were going on this past week. In fact, I don't have much stitching to show you because of my birthday largely, um, but I'm sure you'll forgive me when you see the blast from the past stuff. Uh, Winter Rose Manor. I'm stitching this on the called for fabric and threads, and I've, it doesn't seem like a lot, but believe me, filling in that house is no, no joke. I'm sorry. I really wanted to get up around that cardinal so you could see it better, but just have to wait for another week. Um, so an interesting thing about this is that there is a vertical line right there, which I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but if you have seen the actual um, piece stitched somewhere, perhaps you've stitched it yourself, you'll know that that's a, a line of back stitching. And to me, when I look at the pattern, it actually looks as if there's a line of stitching that was stitched. I mean, one vertical, maybe every other stitch that was stitched in a different color. And that's not how the that's not how it's charted. And I also will say, so if you look at the steps here, you can see that there's a delineation, and that's by using a back stitch. And I did it. So I've done it in the steps, but I can't really see it. And it's really, I'll say, impossible to take out a back stitch in amongst this, the way this is working up, the way I'm stitching it. So, you know, I don't want to be a complainer, but I have been less confident in the designer's choices of floss or in the way floss may have changed its specific colors and so forth since the pub the pattern was designed i think it was published in 2018. i mean not not ages ago there is a date on it somewhere maybe maybe not um i've been disappointed i've been disappointed I'm unsure, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to keep going because one of my mottos is to trust the designer. We'll see. Now, last two times ago, I think, or maybe it was last video, I can't remember, I talked again about um, this blackbird called Mighty Acorn. I'm going to get it. Mighty Acorn which is in the Winds of Autumn book. And I'd said, oh, I found the perfect fabric. It's my piece of um, hog bristle, 16 count Ada by Fox and Rabbit. And as I was considering whether I should cut the piece to have the size that I needed for this so that I could get started, I replayed in my mind the reason that I wasn't doing it on that piece of Lugana that I did um, Spell of the Moon on. And the reason was, some of you attentive people will remember, because one strand over two on 32 count, which is what that was, wouldn't be enough coverage to suit me. And using two strands would likely mean I would have to buy more weeks dye works floss and that would 
result possibly in the dye lots not being the same and not actually looking the same because that's, I think, what I'm running into on the uh, Winter Rose Manor is that the way the threads are dyed has changed a little since Brenda Gervais did the design. So it might have changed a little even in the few months, maybe a year, that I would take to notice that I needed more floss of a certain color. So I had said, I can't do it on 32 count. I need to do it on 36 count because that way I'll have enough floss. Well, when I was about to make that, cut the fabric, I realized, oh yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna do this. That wouldn't work. So I went looking through what I have in fabric and I came across two other good choices. So this is Eureka by Fox and Rabbit. This is 18 count Ada. So that would be equivalent to 36 count linen. And that's what it's charted for is 36 count. And this is a very nice color. It's, um, so it looks, to me, it looks a little peachy in the camera, but I would say it's not pink. It's very lovely sampler color and it's solid that's not mottled. So that's Eureka by Fox and Rabbit, which is nice. And that would go, I think, pretty well with this. What's, what it calls for is um, 36 count Wren by Picture This Plus. But I also have a piece of 18 count um, salt bush, 18 count Ada salt bush by Fox and Rabbit. And I put the threads out on it. So it's kind of a gray color. Let me see if I can do this. Um, it's kind of a grayish color. It has a little brown to it, but it's mostly, I would say, gray. I'm gripping it like this because I have the threads held on the other side. So when I was pulling out fabric, I pulled that out, thought, I wonder what I'm gonna use this for. And then I thought I could use it for this because these colors, these threads look fantastic against this fabric, I think. Um, really nice. So I think I may have settled. I think I may be settled on doing it on Saltbush 18 count Ada. And I think it'll be great. Now it's all whole, it's all cross stitches. I don't think there's even any back stitch. Doesn't say, I don't think there is. So that's what I'm gonna do. Salt bush. Now the, the next um, Blackbird weekend is two weekends from now. So I am ready to go on that and I will start it then. That is, I think that's for sure. Now, what about Hannah Campbell? You may be wondering. Um, I feel as if I should finish Emily Kalwar before I start that. Even though, as soon as I finish Emily Kalwar, I probably also start another sampler from the um, Letters from Europe box. I don't know. Here, let me wet my whistle again with this beverage while I transition to the variety show. Now, let me tell you about my birthday. So I had a very nice day on Friday. I went to the quilting fabric store with my friend Cindy, and then we came home to her house and my husband brought out back and I ate most of my ribeye and um, salad and a sweet potato and it was delicious. And then we, <laughs> Cindy said, if I were a good friend, I would have had a birthday cake for you. And I said, I think that Byron can take care of a birthday cake easily. So he went over to Nantucket, which is a bistro grill-ish kind of restaurant very near where Cindy lives and picked up a, what really was a huge slice of what they call unbirthday cake, which is white cake with different colored icing between the layers. It's a six layer cake. And then white icing with sprinkles on the outside. 
and it's delicious. And so we each had a piece of that. One slice from Nantucket is enough for three people, plus some leftover for me to have for breakfast. So that was really fun, very nice. And then we played Wingspan, which is a game that Cindy and I especially like. Then Saturday, we got up early for me, early. We left the house at eight, so I know, ridiculous. I think we stopped somewhere for breakfast on the way and we went, we drove to our son and daughter-in-law's place in Tennessee. And it was a beautiful day there, beautiful weather. Um, I will stick a couple of pictures in. Um, we, you know, saw their dogs again. They have two puppies. These, these pictures, the puppies are seven months old. Yes. Um, they are Great Pyrenees and they're crossed with another guard dog. And um, they have chickens, which I'm sure you've already seen these pictures. Maybe I've already put these pictures up or pictures like these because, you know. Now, these are not my grand dogs and they are not my, definitely not my grand chickens, but they are my son and daughter-in-law's dogs. The chickens are not yet laying. They're not old enough, but you know, in a few month or two, they might start getting eggs from them, I would think. Um, so uh, that was a fun day. My brother was there. In fact, he took the picture of the two dogs that I'm, that I put up. And we had food and then we, you know, with that my son fixed and daughter-in-law, and then we went to, um, hung out, play cornhole, and we went to a restaurant. And it was beautiful. It was 75 degrees, I would say, sunny, and, it, and a lovely breeze. And it was so pleasant that I forgot that, of course, you can get a sunburn, even if it's cool. So, but my brother brought me some things from the family home. So he had lived there uh, up until about seven years ago. Um, and so he took a lot of the things. I mean, I have things here also from that house, but he, of course, being the resident in the house, when he sold it, he took things. And it was a large Victorian house. And I'm gonna put a picture, some pictures in, a picture in of the house um, in, a, in a few minutes. But before I do that, I wanna just talk about one of the cross stitches that he brought me. He brought me two cross stitches and a few other things. And the cross stitch came from this, I stitched it in 1986, I think, and it came from this book, Bird Watching, which is a, Barbara and Cheryl is the, oh, the bird, the thing, Barbara and Cheryl, I guess, is the publisher, and Lloyd Hooker. And there are a lot of patterns in this book of birds. It's really nice. Um, and I had done this one, the Cardinals for my mother. And I'm going to pick this up just because, let me just take care. Because, just to show you that I have it, but there's not, it's not possible for me to show it to you without so much glare that I took a picture of it a moment ago um, because, hmm, I hadn't thought about what I'm gonna do with it now. because there's too much glare. So I took a picture, which I'll put in here. And I really enjoyed stitching this, especially the snowflakes, the little dots of white throughout. And I think it's a very good representation of the colors of cardinals. Um, so in Western New York, which is where I spent my, that's what I say my hometown is, is Western New York. I mean, recently I had a conversation with my friend Rebecca about what constitutes your hometown. Where are you, where is it that you're from? And I was born in Michigan, but I went to junior high and high school in Leroy. I learned to drive in Leroy. I came home to Leroy from vacations. So that's my hometown. But Cardinals are only winter birds there. No, I'm sorry. They are really only summer birds there. Um, that can't be true. Anyway, they're not as common there as they are in North Carolina. 
But my mother loved cardinals, and we all loved cardinals when we saw them at our winter bird feeder, and so I thought that was a great picture to stitch for her. So I did in 1986, which, you know, that was a long time ago. Now the next one I'm going to show you, I'm going to put up here a picture of our house. Now this is a picture my brother took when he was in probably early high school or maybe, I don't know, probably high school. And my parents actually rigged up a dark room for him in the third story of this house in the picture because he was very interested in photography and he took some excellent pictures uh, and he did his own developing and printing, um, which there's a lot of knowledge involved in black and white developing and printing. And this was one of the pictures he took and he gave it to me for my birthday or something one year. And I was quite taken with it. You know, we loved that house. And my mother had grown up in that house. She had actually been born in the house next door. And when she was 18 months old or so, the family moved to this house because of, I think my great grandfather died. And so my grandfather and grandmother moved their family into that house. And it was a great house. And it was built in 1887 by a man named, mm, can't remember, wow. I could always recall that to mind, but you know, I haven't thought about the details for quite a while. Anyway, it was bought by somebody and apparently he overextended himself because in the next, within a couple of years, he sold it. It was built, I'm sorry, in 1887. It was built in 1887. And in 1889 or 1890, my grandfather bought it from him for, you know, $2,000 or something. But that was a lot of money back then. I mean, that was a huge amount of money. My great-grandfather, my great-grandfather bought it. And um, that was a lot of money. He was a doctor in town. And the centennial of the house was coming up. And so my husband was newly employed at IBM. And his first job at IBM was in the digital lab where they were working on digital cameras and um, making digital cameras talk to computers, that is creating cameras that would talk to computers and put pictures on computers in the IBM world. Um, and so he had access to something that was not available in the, in the marketplace yet. So one Saturday we went in, I took that picture with me, we went in and he set it up with the digital camera and he created, now I'm going to show you this, and it's all colored because I, I don't think I have a, well, I'll show you a page of it that he created the pattern from the digital camera for, from the picture. And I had asked him, and it was convenient to do it in 10 digits because that way every pixel would be represented by one symbol zero through nine, and I could stitch the, I could make a cross stitch out of it in um, 10 shades of brown. And so this is the pattern as I worked on it. You see, I colored it as I was working on it because it was very difficult to discern the symbols without doing that. And I stitched it starting in, I, I, there's a label on the back, I'm gonna show it to you in a minute. March 1st, 1986, and I finished it March 1st, 1987, in honor of the, oh, this is the, this is right way up, in honor of the centennial of the house, and I gave it to my mother, and, you know, it was amazing, I mean, it really was amazing, and then in some year, in, you know, it's funny how dates are not really complete, um, on things. So there was a Festival of the Arts, and this was apparently the 18th annual Festival of the Arts in Leroy, New York. And they had a featured artist and they had a lot of um, displays and demonstrations. And I mean, there was a, quite a bit of um, stuff going on and they showed 
art by people. And it was supposed to be, you know, local people. But I'm just looking at the list, and there are people from all over New York State in that area. But I am listed Emily Hill Williams, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, as being the, I think it's the only cross stitch that was displayed. So it was displayed there. And I'm going to say that this might have been, oh, I wrote a date on it, 1988. So the next year, I finished it in 1987 in honor of the 100th anniversary of the building of that house. And um, it was displayed the next year. And that was after I'd gotten it framed. But I, again, I'm not going to make you look at it like this. I'm, I'm gonna also insert a picture. Actually, that's not terrible. Although it's kind of terrible. Um, but this is the cross stitch. And because I have always been a statistician, not, not really, but always interested in numbers, um, I wrote a label on the back of it when it was just, actually when I gave it to my mother. And also for the display of this, I recreated the label for the uh, display. And it says, I worked it in three strands of floss on 14 count Ada. It's 206 by 255 stitches. And um, the graph was made by a computer, which was a novelty in those days, in 1988, 1987. And um, that is about 52,000 stitches, which is, so my uh, under the roof of blue Ionian weather is 72,000 stitches. I did this one in one year. Now I was highly motivated and I was probably only working on it and maybe one other small piece at a time as opposed to the number of pieces I can now work on at a time. It says I use, I wrote down that I used 39 skeins total of 10 shades of six strand embroidery floss. So until my brother said he was gonna bring this down for me if I wanted it, which I said, yes, I do. I was considering stitching it again because I have the pattern, you know, what I showed you and stitching it on maybe 20 count Ada with one strand um, because I really thought it was a very impressive thing to have done. I mean, I was impressed with myself, pleased about it, but I didn't get around to it. I wasn't sure that I really wanted to, and I thought that there was a chance that he would offer to give me the original cross stitch, and I'm very happy that he did. Not, not only because that means I don't have to stitch it, but because I like having it in this size. It's a, you know, substantial piece that um, I'm happy to have actually here in the house, the one that I stitched. Now, one other interesting thing about that house, it was built in 1887, as I said. Um, so was Biltmore in North Carolina, in Western North Carolina, the estate of one of the Vanderbilts. Can't remember which one. And of course, the main part of the that mansion, I mean, that house, I, I don't even know what to call it. If you've, you, you can Google it and look at pictures of it if you aren't familiar with what it is. Um, our, rep our rooms that were actually brought from Europe and installed in that house and along with furnishings and so forth. So there's, you know, the 14th century French dining room or whatever. I don't remember the details. Visited that house a few times. I mean, it's a spectacular and very impressive house. One of the things you can do if you visit it is you can do the back stairs tour. And we did that one time. And so we went into the bedrooms where the servants lived and the kitchens and the butlers, pantries, and so forth. And looking around at the walls in the servants' quarters, I said to Byron, I said, this is the wainscoting, the same exact wainscoting that is in the house in Leroy. And it was in the servants' quarters and in the upstairs areas of my, the house, my house was the same exact manufactured wainscoting, primarily oak, uh, narrow boards with a little bead edge, uh, as was in the Biltmore in the servants' quarters. 
Now we also in the main part of Leroy House had, 12 Church Street had cherry paneling and oak paneling that was, you know, nicer than just this wainscoting. But the fact that it was the same stuff, 1887, the same year, uh, was quite interesting to me. So that is what I have to show you today. And I hope that, um, that those of you who are hoping for games or books or knitting or weaving or recipes or something aren't too disappointed uh, because I was really happy to have these two uh, older cross stitches to bring and show today. So I hope you found something of interest and I hope that you'll come back. I think that there will be nothing to prevent me from doing a video again next week. And I think that's, I think that, I think the next two weeks should be probably likely videos. The third week from now won't be, I'm pretty sure, because I won't be home. Um, but regardless, thanks for joining me and many blessings to you, friends.